dude. We're freaking out that we get a chance to talk to you. I, I love that backdrop. It's awesome. It's a little... Hang on. Let me get some lights on. Here. Oh, oh okay. Me... <laughs> I thought you were just audio. I didn't even realize you were on video. Uh, I'm going to get some video here. I look okay today, I think. Okay. See, there, we, there, there we go. It's a little... Oh, there you go. A crazy. What's up, guys? I love all the... Holy... That's a lot of Funko. Yeah, it's a problem. It really yeah. is. Yeah. They, um, I'm waiting for the comic book men... Funkos. Um, so far nothing. But um, I think me. I, I've always said I'd be easy. Like they could just take either the short round one or the or the Glenn from Walking Dead and just paint it. <laughs> <laughs> You're petitioning for it, though, right? Yeah, I mean that whole Asian stereotype. Like if it if it gets me a Funko, then I'm all for it. <laughs> right. <laughs> what was it that you said, Jen, before before we jumped on? Oh, I was like, yes, we're interviewing an Asian celebrity. I know we're getting there. I think there was one kind I went to. I think it was te- in Texas. It was me, um, George Takei, and like Ming Na Wen, and I was like, yes, like this is awesome. So yeah, mm-hmm. that was that was that was cool. It's get, it, we're get, we're getting there slowly but surely. Yeah, I think so. It's cool. I, I, I got. I got a, I, I'm all backlit here. I got a little. I got a pusheen here, though. Oh, nice, awesome. Is that yours or your kids? Uh, it's. I tell people it's my kids. It's totally mine, though. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Just own up to it. Yeah. <laughs> all good. This is a very safe place. Yes. Don't worry. There we go. There, there we go. We go. <laughs> uh-huh. Oh wait. Well, I have two. I got a big one too. So. <laughs> awesome. Okay, so uh, we'll just do a, a brief intro and then jump right into it. So. Okay, cool. Well, thanks for waiting for me, guys. Oh, yeah, sure. No problem. We'll, like, wait forever for you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so welcome, nerds, to another episode of Nerds Are Us. And all of us NC ladies are crazy excited and nervous to be joined by a staple of the nerd community, the Ming Chen. Hello, everybody. Hi. <laughs> um, if anyone's wondering, Rachel wasn't able to join us today because uh, she's uh, volunteering for an event in Vancouver. And um, if anyone else is wondering, I sound especially nasal today because I'm still getting over Dallas Fan Expo con crud. <laughs> yeah, that. Yeah. Um, yeah. But anyway, it's a real um, thing. how are you, Ming? How's life been treating you? I, I'm doing great, and the con crud thing, it, it's its very real. When I get it, though, uh, you know, my voice gets deeper, I get nasal. Uh, we, we sound sexy, yeah. not going to lie. Yeah. And, uh, that, that applies to you as well. So. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Um, I had the raspiness a couple of days ago, now I'm just gross, but thanks. <laughs> <laughs> um, so in case anyone has been living under a rock, how would you describe yourself and what you do? Me, I, uh, geez, that's a, that's a great question. Um, I started out doing graphic design. Uh, I've been working with Kevin Smith, uh, you know, Mr. King nerd himself for about 20 years. And about five years ago, uh, he sent me, uh, he sent me a text where he called me and he was like, Hey, there, uh, I, I, um, that comic book store I own and the one that you work in, uh, we're going to shoot a reality show in there and they want you on it. And um, anyone who knows Kevin, for, uh, who's been following the last few years, uh, knows that he smokes a lot of weed. So <laughs> my reply was, dude, like what, how much weed have you been smoking and where did you get it? Because you just told me that they want to shoot a reality TV show at Jane Silent Bob's Secret Stash and they want me on, you just said they wanted me on there. Like, I'm not an actor. I'm, I'm not, you know, I've, I've no aspirations to be on reality TV. Like, what are you talking about? Um... And it turned out that AMC, uh, after the success of The Walking Dead, indeed wanted a reality TV show. It was centered around comic books. And um, uh, we shot a little pilot, and I guess they liked it. And uh, uh, five seasons later, we're still going, and uh, we're gearing up for a sixth season right now. So, um, yeah, weird things happen when you work with Kevin Smith. Um, sometimes you podcast, sometimes you get on his podcast network, and sometimes you... Uh, you get on a TV show called Comic Book Men. So, uh, yeah, those are the weird things that happen when you work, work with Kevin. He, uh, like he a magical nerd tooth fairy that just keeps on giving. <laughs> yeah, I, I, that's absolutely it. And, uh, yeah, weird things happen when you work with him. Um, uh, you know, I, I'm, he, he may cure cancer one day. He may put us on the moon one day. You, you really never know. So it's pretty cool. But 
Uh, and and uh, you know he he, he kind of launched us into like nerd heaven for sure. I believe it. And it would come from him. <laughs> uh, Jams, did you have some specific questions? Uh, yeah. Um, my husband and I are pretty big comic book men fans. Thank you. <laughs> we love the show. Um, was there ever a time when somebody brought something into the secret stash that got turned down that you thought about later on down the road and wish you had jumped on it? There, there were a couple of things. I think uh, in recent memory, like a guy brought in a Walking Dead number one that I think we, we I can't remember if we bought it or I, I remember turning it away because he wanted it. We He wanted too much. At the time, time I think he wanted like a thousand bucks for it. And um, I guess we, we probably should have realized that that comic right now will never go down in value. Um, probably should have snapped it up. Uh, I, I'm, it's, it's, it's tough speculating. Um, I, I, uh, especially for us, we're all kind of old school guys and we read, uh, I think especially with the comic books, we, we've, we grew up reading comics for fun. We read up, we grew up reading comics for their storylines and the characters and the artwork. And, uh, now with the advent of, uh, you know, uh, there are people coming and speculating, collecting them for money. It's still a weird concept, uh, um, especially for us. And now with the advent of a uh, CGC or CBGCB or CBGB or what, whatever, all the you know all these uh, services that put them between plastic and encase them, and I mean, it's kind of like freezing on solo on carbonite. Like you can't enjoy the <laughs> the, the guy inside of it, and it, it's uh, it, it pains me to see comic books uh, you know CGC put between plastic where you can never read them again. Um, and, uh, I mean, that really kind of quantifies them as something as a, like a, a monetary commodity. Um, it's kind of a, a, a tough thing for us. Like, you know, I, I know they have value and I know, you know, people trade them for, for goods and services and cold hard cash. But, uh, for us though, it's, it's definitely the story. So, um, yeah, I, I guess I could see where we let that go, but later on, you know, I was like, man, that thing's like never... I think, uh, you know, ungraded that thing's worth about, in good condition, about $1,500 now. Uh, I could see if the show keeps going like it is, uh, I could see it going up to, you know, seventeen, eighteen, two thousand dollars $2,000. So, uh, I mean, financially, I guess we uh, kind of re regret, kind of regretted that. But, um, yeah, but, yeah, there's so many different facets. Like, baseball cards, I can see there's only two sides of them. I could see uh, why you would grade something like that. Uh, you know, movie props. Uh, things like that. Um, action figures, you know, you don't, um, I know they grade those as well, but comic books are, 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 are a tough thing for us. Yeah, that's understandable. It's, it's kind of the same concept with toys. Like, when you collect toys, like, as you can see, I let my collection breathe. But, you know, some collectors are all about just keeping them mint, keep them in the box. <laughs> yeah, and so, you know, toys are meant to be played with. I, I admire you busting out your Funkos. <laughs> It's not um, to say that I don't have a few that I kept in the box because I oh, figured yeah, I, they I would be worth something. I know the ones uh, that I can't see out of camera range. Uh, I know um, you probably have some pretty rare ones that you won't take out, which is which, which I totally understand. What would you say is the weirdest thing that has been brought into the stash? Uh, weirdest? Uh, I always go to this. Uh, there, there, there's a, a certain subculture of toys that toy companies have put out uh, oddly enough a lot of them have come out from disney and they wind up being either very inappropriate or phallic <laughs> uh, the, the the example i go to uh there's a toy out there when the when the tarzan movie came out yeah. um i think in the 90s um there's one called the rad repeating tarzan mm -hmm. and, um, if you hit this little switch in the back of his in his back uh he would do the tarzan yell but uh his his hand would go up and down um, yeah, close to his crotch region. I remember and, that. Uh, yeah, and he would be doing the Tarzan yell at the same time. Oh and, uh, you know, it looked like, you know, he was, he was, he was, uh, very happy. He was, he was, uh, you know, very, uh, he was, he was doing something that, uh, a lot of guys, um, do when there are no women around and, you know, they have needs, I guess. Uh -huh. But, uh, we, you know, for a grown man, you know, in the privacy of his own home, great. Uh, as a toy meant for children not great at all and it was pretty obvious and uh you know i think it i think it came it was out for a week or two and uh you know a concerned parent uh made a call an angry call and they pulled it from the shelves but a few of them got out and people own them and you know they're kind of traded as a collectible toy uh but 
you know, in my mind, is like, how does this get? I know it is, this passes through the drawing board, conception, prototype, uh, you know, packaging. Uh, you know, they send them off to China to be molded and put together, and uh, and then put on shelves. I, I know it probably passed through a hundred executives' eyes, and no one saw anything. It's very weird. So, um, those are always weird. Uh, there was another one. It was a, I think it was a, it was a Punisher toy that transformed into. A missile launcher but some somewhere between step three and four uh the missile also came out from the crotch area now that you could hit a button and the missile would launch out uh again meant for children highly inappropriate got uh also got pulled from shelves and uh yeah th- those things always baffle me i was like did nobody see this <laughs> and you know the the cost that they that incurred for them to produce a toy like that just to be pulled yeah, I, I, it always struck me as weird. Now, if I understand and remember correctly, you're a big G.I. Joe fan, correct? I am. I love G.I. Joe. Uh, and, uh, and specifically anything between the years uh, 1982 and 1986. Uh, some, like anything that came after them, I'm not really into. But uh, anything that came out basically between the ages of when I was like 8 and 12, like I'm really, really into I remember the uh, the episode with the USS Flag aircraft yeah. carrier playset. That Always was pretty epic. Yeah, it, uh, uh, that the USS Flag uh, something that came out, I think in like eighty three, eighty four, around that area. Uh, it was the first toy to hit the market to almost push the hundred dollar mark. So I think it was. I think it came out as about about eighty nine dollar, like ninety to a hundred dollars. Uh, one of the biggest toys ever produced is about seven feet long. Uh, it was built. It was an aircraft carrier built to scale, so you could put uh, the GI Joe figures and some of the some of the airplanes on there. And um, yeah, when that came out, I, I wanted it. I, I, I did the thing with my parents. I was like, you don't have to buy me a Christmas or birthday present for like the next twenty years if you buy me this. And um, yeah, at the time, I think a GI Joe figure was about three dollars. A vehicle was maybe fifteen, twenty dollars. So for something to push a hundred dollars, my, par- my parents uh, they were notoriously cheap too. So they were like, "No, <laughs> you." Will, they, I mean, they basically told me like I would never own it. So um, that stuck in my head for a while. And uh, when somebody brought that in uh, a couple of seasons ago, I had to have it. I talked them down to a good price, and uh, yeah, it was almost like thirty years to the day. Um, something I've been waiting thirty years to have. So I finally, yeah, I finally broke down and bought it. And, uh, yeah, that, um, yeah, that still makes me smile. That thing is pretty cool. Uh, in relation to this topic, this question is actually from my husband. Um, what would you consider, do you consider that to be the holy grail of your collection or what would you consider your holy grail? I, uh, I, I, I think it's, I definitely think it's one of them. Um, I think, uh, yeah, that would, for something... Uh, that something that I wanted so for so long, and it's and it's fairly valuable. Like out of, like loose out of the box, it's still pushing you know five to six hundred dollars. Uh, I think um, that being said, um, I am, uh, you know, the collector mentality. You know, what's better than one thing that you've wanted all your life? Um, you know, how about two or three or five or ten? Um, I'm looking for one in box right now, which is probably pushing two grand maybe in good condition maybe more so i um yeah that can collect their mentality like you're never satisfied with one you you know you're never satisfied with the one you have it's it's great it fills that hole for a little while and then you look under the next thing so i think um yeah if i could find one in box it doesn't even have to be sealed like sealed would be awesome but i would want to take it out um uh but, um you know just to have the box though and have everything in it, it um would be pretty awesome or one or one that was recently open would probably be like a holy grail in my collection but um yeah the one i have yeah probably up there probably one of the coolest things i own um right now um actually or actually leading up to comic palooza though actually leading up to this weekend uh something that just came in today uh, i ordered an aliens poster online and i just got it today and um I'm hoping to get it autographed by the the 30th uh, cast reunion members that will be at Houston Comic Palooza this weekend. Um, I'm looking forward to that. Uh, Aliens, probably one of my favorite movies of all time. Uh, Definitely top five, if not top three. And uh, something I've been quoting since 1986 on almost a daily basis. 
And uh, so to have that, I uh, have most of the cast together. I'm, I'm hoping they'll sign it for me. It's um, so I, that Sigourney is going to be here. It's just crazy. Yeah, it's insane. And um, uh, I have to credit my friend uh, Alex Wolf, who runs the, the photo ops booth. Uh, I looked at the Saturday photo op schedule. So it's like 11 a.m. Ming Chen, 11.15 Sigourney Weaver, 11.30 Bill Paxton. And then like That's noon awesome. is like the whole cast. And uh, I, I, I texted him. And I was like, you had, a, you had a hand in this, didn't you? If you did, and, uh, you know, whatever favors you need from now on, uh, I'm there <laughs> for you. So uh, I thank him. For, I know that was a strategic placement, so I uh, I thank him. But uh, <laughs> anybody, for anybody getting a Sigourney Weaver photo op or Bill Paxton of the Aliens cast, uh, you know, if you want, come a little early. Might as well get throw me in there, too. Or, or you know, we can just geek out about Aliens. <laughs> um. So... Stemming off of just the nerddom and what it's like right now and just how mainstream it's become, not only because of, you know, the MCU and uh, everything else, uh, how do you feel about it being so mainstream and just your general thoughts about the nerddom today? I, uh, I think it's great. I think, uh, I, think, I think the more the merrier in terms of nerddom. Um, I, I'm a little older than you guys, but when I was growing up, uh, when I was in high school, uh, I knew of, like, two kids who read comics. Um, and I only knew that because uh, I think I was walking down the hall one day and one kid had, like, a, an X-Men comic book in his backpack. And I stopped and I was like, dude, like, you read the X-Men? You know what Wolverine is? He's like, yeah, man, I love Wolverine. And I, mean, I went to his house and he had, like, he had he had pages and strips up on his wall. He had a poster. So, I mean, we became, we, we became very fast friends. Uh, later on, we found out, we found this other kid who also read comics. And um, and we you know we we were kind of a uh, we were kind of a nerd gang, um, but that was it. This was like out of a class of like you know three or four hundred people, so it was kind of a lonely thing. And um, uh, as a fan, you know, I knew how good the stories were. Like I was bursting at the seams to talk to anybody who would understand what I was talking about. So I, I, I and so now in uh, you know in two thousand sixteen. Uh, it's pretty, you know, it, it's not hard to find somebody else who, who can talk to you about the X-Men and the Avengers and Spider-Man and somebody who knows who Black Panther is. Uh, and that's why I love going to cons because, uh, you know, you can turn and see like 30, 40, 50,000 people who also share your same interests. Um, and I, and I think it's, I, I think it's great. Um, it, yeah, it was just such a struggle when I was growing up for anybody, um, to not only think, uh, not only know what I was talking about, but but to also think it was cool. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. That and and now um, it's not very hard. <laughs> it's not that's not very hard. And uh, and now everyone's wearing like Star Wars T-shirts. Right. And, uh, and you know T-shirts with Captain America shields on them. That really wasn't the case when I was growing up. So I I, I think it's amazing. Um, and not only that, with the uh, you know with the demand and the audience and and ticket dollars. Uh, um, movies and TV shows and comics and anything pop culture uh, has been elevated to a level where they have to make it better to attract an audience. And, uh, you know, as such, we have all these cool Marvel movies now. Uh, DC, you know, maybe not so much right now, but they're, they're catching up, um, uh, especially with them uh, elevating Jeff Johns to uh, co-head of the film department. Mm -hmm. um, but also, when I was growing up, you know, I lived in an age where, uh, like, Dolph Lundgren played the Punisher. Right. Which was... You know, not great. <laughs> um, I lived in an age where David Hasselhoff was Nick Fury, also not so great. Um, <laughs> um, you know, I, I just lived in an era where they, you know, they didn't, they weren't really trying, and uh, you know, they were kind of, they made comic book movies to sell toys and things like that. So, right. so uh, you know, for us to see like Black Panther on a on a movie screen, like done really really cool. Uh, you know, now everybody knows who the Guardians of the Galaxy are. You know, not. Um, even Ant-Man, I never thought I'd see Ant-Man on the big screen and done really well. So, uh, and then, you know, and now, uh, you know, seeing the Civil War on a movie screen or, and I know everyone didn't love it, but, you know, Batman fighting Superman, like that's, that it's, it's mind blowing. It's pretty, it's pretty cool. Like coming from where, where I was as a kid, um, the quality of how things were, uh, you know, one or maybe two comic book TV shows that to now, I mean, they're like seven, nine, I think we hit double digits if you count like the, the the Daredevil Netflix series and Jessica Jones. Um, it's pretty cool. So, uh, yeah, we, we live in a, we live in a good time. I don't, uh, you know, as much as I hear, I hear a lot of, 
uh, a lot of whining, really, is, is what I call it. About you know little details that maybe they maybe they didn't get right. Um, I think I think I think we have it pretty easy these days, especially the kids growing up. Yeah, for sure. Mm-hmm. I sound like such an old man, but I can't help it. That's um, you know I I, uh, I suffered through buying a, a like a bootleg Roger Corman Fantastic Four DVD, you know, at a con. Or uh, there was a 1994 Captain America movie that never really hit theaters. That was god awful. Yeah. Um, but but I went and I bought it just because it was out there. Yeah. Well, you're um you're around my sister's age, and uh, I'm I'm in my early 30s. So I through her I was witness to a lot of those things. Yeah. And so I have the memory of that. So I, I recognize the struggle. Um. in in comparison to today, but, um, and not only with cons, but also I think social media lends a hand to making it so much easier for people to touch base and create communities and such, because I mean, me being in Houston, Jamie's in upstate New York, Janine and Rachel are in Vancouver, and we actually all met on Twitter, and... That's cool, and now you're, like, good friends, and, uh... Yeah. And, uh, yeah, and, 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 like, we can hang out like this, this is pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. So it's definitely, like, yeah, it's definitely an even time. <laughs> um, let's see. That's here. cool. Uh, yeah, that's cool. And then uh, hopefully you get together in real life at, at some points at cons or whatever. And, uh, oh, yeah, we do. Yeah, we, we definitely. Once a year. That's <laughs> usually month. once a year, and it's usually at San Diego. So. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. That's that's great. Yeah, it's easier to it's easier to, easier to hang out and uh, you know if you guys drink, it's easier to get drunk together when you're face to face. Fun. Here, it's fun. Um, if there's one thing you could change about uh, the fandoms and how they interact with each other, um, what would it be? And that's probably also related to the social media aspect of it and just how easy it is for people to be negative sometimes. Oh, that's a, yeah, that's a great question. I mean, I mean, um, I guess uh, like I, I kind of appreciate where where things were and where they are now, and. Um, uh, I, uh, yeah, you do see a lot of, you see a lot of whining, you see a lot of, uh, a lot of negativity, uh, as far as, uh, you know, either simple movie reviews go or, or things like that. Um, but I think, I don't know, I think for the most part, it's been pretty positive. Like I've never gone to a con and see a fight before. I'm sure it's happened, but I think people are, uh, you know, um, with the superhero philosophy, you know, kind of truth, justice in the American way. Or I know you guys are in Vancouver, so like you know the Canadian way as well. You know, like, I, 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 I like I like Alpha Flight. I think you know I love Wolverine, so you know I love uh, I love Canada actually. So, um, and uh, yeah, I, I, I don't know I, I, anything negative. I'm not for. I think that I think uh, I see a lot of negativity in the cosplay community right now. Mm-hmm. Um, and as much as uh, I guess uh, you know they're they're. You know, super little things like you know, people who don't make their costumes, people who buy their costumes, things like that. Uh, I guess uh, there, uh, there's been some argument in the, in the cosplay community about people, uh, you know, how they make their money. You know, whether like uh, you know Patreon or or uh, how how far they'll go to 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 make money and attend cons and things like that. Um, yeah, I don't know. I just kind of like to see everybody have fun. So, which I see for the most part. So it's like a you know. It, it's a ninety nine percent thing that uh, we we all go and, uh, and and have fun, have a good time. So, um, yeah, uh, I, I guess uh, it, it's pretty it's pretty rare that I see people trashing each other. It hap- it definitely happens though. So, so um, I think we just get overly passionate and then just sometimes just let verbal diarrhea just come out. Yeah, yeah, it, yeah. It 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 spills out. Um, I guess. I mean, I guess the other thing I've been seeing is uh. Um, uh, I've been mean, just the cost to uh, the cost of being a fan mm. is also increasing, and um, it's kind of reaching a level where it's um, it's being it's becoming unattainable to you know the regular person. Um, I see, uh, yeah, I see a lot of like guests, uh, even uh, you know VIP packages, admissions, uh, topping, uh, like an autograph. When it, when you're hitting three digits, it's getting it's a bit much. Mm-hmm. It's tough yeah. when, when when VIP Crazy. packages are topping like a thousand dollars, thousand dollars or fifteen hundred dollars. Uh, that's tough. Um, on the other hand, I was at Wizard World Philadelphia, where you know, um, like almost all the Avengers were there, and there's the Back to the Future cast was there, and uh, 
that and I saw those lines and you know people are willing to pay for it so I can't begrudge I also can't begrudge uh, them asking for that much um, you know people people were willing to pay for it it's just uh, it's it's tough it's a lot of money yeah I can begrudge because uh, I can't afford it <laughs> <laughs> you're like nope nope couldn't do it um, Jen do you have a couple questions for me yeah so um we know that you are a part of two charities. Yes. Um, they are... The I think there's one called the Kenny Corden Foundation. Uh, there's Kenny one called Corden Street Board. Um, yeah, the one... Uh, I, gotta, I, gotta, I gotta update that. Um, uh, I'm part of... A, uh, the most recent one I've been into is one called Root, Root to Rise, which uh, is a sober, active uh, community, which kind of um, champions uh, sober, act, sober living through like physical activity like yoga and running. And, and nice. just kind of just kind of moving around, uh, something something that a friend started locally, and uh, I've been friends with her for a while. And um, she uh, she asked me if I would be on the board, which I was only honored to do. So I I, I, I like to run around every so often, and or jump on surfboards or stand up paddle boards, or uh, I guess you guys are in Vancouver. Like my one of the things on my bucket list is to go there and climb. Uh, I think it's called the Grind, the Grouse Grind. I believe it's called. Grouse in Vancouver. Grind, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah. I'd love to do something like that. Uh, there's a big half marathon there every summer called the Seaweeds, which I would love to do. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, things like things like that. Um, uh, I just like to see people being healthy and running around. And um, and uh, yeah, I, I guess uh, you know, since I kind of fell into all this, like kind of ass backwards. Um, if there's anything I can do to help support people and help people, and um, oh, yeah, I'm all willing. I'm all willing and uh, willing to do it. So uh, so that includes any any kind of charity work. Um, that's also expanded into uh, people wanting me to uh, read their comic books. Uh, you know, a lot of independent artists and creators out there. And um, and uh, yeah, if you see me at a con, you know, if you're uh, an artist alley, you got an up and coming comic book, please do bring it by. I would love to read it. I would love to. I would love to check that out. Or uh, that also extends to uh, uh, podcasters as well. Um, I'm always encouraging podcasters to come by with a recorder, and uh, you know, if they need a soundbite or a or interview segment, uh, I like absolutely. Please do roll by. Uh, I'm a fellow podcaster. I'm a fellow. Uh, I know how hard it is to get content. So, um, um, you know, that takes me what five, ten minutes. And I love answering questions. Uh, obviously, I'm, uh, I've been pretty long winded with you guys, but I love it. So, it's so all anything, good. Yeah, anything I can I can do to help people out for sure. Yeah, we were part of the uh, Twitter party that we were doing for Comic Palooza, and we saw that you were sweet enough to tweet out for bloggers and podcasters to come by your table and say hi. And yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, I, I've seen. Uh, I, I I think it's a natural thing. Comic Palooza, in particular, though, has been especially encouraging the podcasters, which is smart because I think like regular radio and media is is either dead or is, or is on its way out. Like podcasting, where it's at. Something where uh, anybody can just kind of pick up a recorder, uh, recording device, and record a podcast, and then uh, you know have it up on on iTunes or SoundCloud or Stitcher uh, within ten minutes. Uh, that's the way things are going, and um, and uh, yeah, I was taught by the best. Uh, I think Kevin Smith is one of the king podcasters out there. So, yeah. um, but uh, it's something that I think is so awesome and so fun. Uh, something that everybody should be doing. Um, so yeah, if I can help people out, uh, help people to either, either um, start their own podcast or get their own podcast that they already started going, like I'm all for. It's awesome. Well, I'll definitely be stopping by your table to say hi, give you a hug. I've, oh yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah, hu- um, I'm all, I'm always there for a hug. So <laughs> absolutely. Um, you, yeah, you I can't, have I, I can't wait to... What's that? You're gonna have a panel there as well. Uh, I haven't seen the schedule yet. I would assume. I'm hoping. <laughs> I love doing panels, so I'm 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 hoping uh, I have a panel scheduled somewhere. Uh, I also believe they want me to moderate a couple of them, which uh, which uh, which is cool. I hope they throw some cool ones at me. Um, I think one one that I've uh, one that I love doing. Uh, I, I moderated a Michael Rooker panel a couple weeks ago, and that guy is insane. That guy is so crazy. And so fun. Like, if you've not attended a Michael Rooker panel, uh, you should definitely put that at the top of your list. Oh, I'll have my first at Comic Palooza since he's now part of the part of the group. Yeah, he's part of the family. And uh, yeah, but I saw some other cool names on there: uh, Dominic Cooper, and uh, I think there's like a, there's a Carl Weathers panel. Um, you know, who doesn't want to ask some questions for Apollo Creed himself? So, 
Uh, yeah, there. Uh, Count Blue is every year always knocking it out of the park. I'm very honored to be coming back. I think at this point, they call me. Uh, they call me like Comic Blue as an alumni at this point. So I think that's pretty cool. Yeah, it's awesome. Um, let me see here. I think. And, uh, yeah, so that's cool. So you're a native Houstonian. Um, uh, uh, I, I first started coming to Comic Blue two years ago, and I really fell in love with the city. So uh, I think you're very lucky to be in Houston. Oh, I'm glad you say that. We get so much flack sometimes. <laughs> I, I notice that. I notice a lot of people who live in like Dallas and Austin and San Antonio kind of dump on Houston, and I, and I don't know why. I found, I found so many cool things in that city that uh, you know I you know like I would love to uh, I, w- I would love to hang out there more. Um, but um, I'm going to throw a little plug in here. If anybody come to Comic Palooza or Houston, right within walking distance of the convention center is this little place called Neil's Bar. Mm. And, uh, yeah. It's a big geek bar where you go in, and there are literally comic books on racks that you can sit and read while you're drinking a beer. And um, there's a TV there that rolls The Simpsons on a on, on a loop while you're there. So um, nice. Yeah, there's a there's a TARDIS in there. There's a there's a, a Star Wars like toys and figures strewn like all around the bar. It's a pretty cool place. So uh, if you're coming, uh, I'll definitely be there. Pretty much every night, so come and hang out. <laughs> awesome. Um, Tony, Ronnie, that means I have to come back. <laughs> huh? Ronnie, that means I have to go back. <laughs> yeah, you guys have to come back. I wish you guys were there this weekend. I'd love to meet you guys too, but I, I, I know it's plane tickets and lodging and all that stuff. And yeah, yeah. Huh. Well, all, all of us have full time jobs. On top yeah, of this, I know. So I understand. Like, and, and I know uh, you mentioned San Diego. Uh, you got to save up for San Diego. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I understand. Yeah, so. It's okay. Uh, we make it work now. Okay, a, l- a little moment of pause. I know um, I don't want to take up too much more of your time, Ming. But we had a, we have a non-rapid fire, rapid fire <laughs> question. <laughs> right, well, as they say, fire away. Um, it's I, I, all part of our non-podcast podcast. Right. <laughs> We're yeah. not really around here <laughs> um i'm having a hard time pulling it up on asana girls if one of you could pull up the questionnaire because i can't i can't find it <laughs> take your take, take your time I'm, I'm i'm currently trying to identify all the funkos behind you so oh. <laughs> <laughs> mine are currently not breathing because i'm decorating my room around them Right. So I'm trying to figure out how I'm going to position them in order to actually place them around the place. So they're just kind of living here for a while. I understand. I love them. Yeah, and, and mine is mine is just like living all over the place in the room that I'm currently in right now. That's probably what I would do. I'd probably put some in the bathroom. I put some in the kitchen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I think I've got it here. You got them? Yeah, because I can't find them for the life of me. Uh, All right, well, I, I do have one memorized at the top of my head, ladies. Go ahead. <laughs> Would you like me to ask, ask that one? Yes. All right, so, Ming, you know we were talking about that that bar place where you find all the nerdy toys. So, if you could have a drink with anybody, real or fictional, Ooh. And you can take them to that bar. Who would it be? That's a ooh, that's a great question. Um, I think one person who we have not had on the show yet. We've had a lot of cool guests on the show. Uh, one that I've always wanted to get on there, and it's um, it's not impossible. He's still living. Uh, it's probably George Lucas. Um, such a huge fan Hi. of Star Wars universe that uh, I would I would love to. And a lot of people dump on him now, but I would love to ask him. Uh, you know when, why, like what was going through his head, um, how he feels about uh, creating a franchise that will probably live on, you know, until the world blows up and the sun, you know, the sun goes out. Um, that is just something that, uh, it, I, I, it'll never die. Not only that, but it, you know, it affected my life. It changed my life. I think it changed, it changes people's lives on a daily basis. And, uh, I, I, I the way it came together, um, uh, you know, like a movie like that would never be made now. Um, mm-hmm. You know, I think a movie company would be like, well, all right, like Darth Vader, like you have to give him a backstory. You have to, instead of just throwing him out there and, you know, nobody cared where he came from. You know, when we saw it, nobody cared where he came from. Nobody knew, no, nobody knew why he was breathing like that. Nobody knew why he was dressed in that weird, weird suit. It didn't matter. It was just so cool. And uh, I would, I have a million questions for him. And, and beyond that, I'm a big fan of like American Graffiti and even Howard the Duck. 
And uh, I think that if I got him drunk enough, that he would answer me honestly about what was going on with the prequels as well. <laughs> so, I think, you know, I think sober, I don't think he would tell me, but, you know, you, um, uh, and, uh, um, yeah, and uh, at one bar I went to, they did have a Star Wars themed drinks. Uh, one was called the Emperor Palpatini. And, uh, and then, I, I think if I got, if I got enough Emperor Palpatinis in him, he would, he would answer honestly. About <laughs> well, hopefully that'll work out. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, right? Yeah. Uh, you. You, know, you know what? You never know. You just never know. Exactly. You never know. Yeah, you know, he's a big fan of our non-podcast podcast. He may be listening to this in the future and be like, you know what? I need to give Ming a call. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm not so that George hungry. Kiss, George listening. Listening. <laughs> Go ahead, James. Okay. Um, if you could vacation in any fantasy, literary, television, or film realm, where would you go? Oh, man, that's a great question. You know, do I choose, like, Middle Earth from Lord of the Rings? Uh, you know, do I do take a ski vacation on Hoth? Um, uh, wow, that's a great question. I think, um, I, you know what, I, would, I think right now, uh, you know, especially this is kind of timely and, I guess, um, I would like to hang out with the Ghostbusters from 1984, I think. Just in, you know, I'm not that far from New York City, but I would love to strap on a proton pack and go ghostbusting with them. And then afterwards, you know, we could sit back with our ecto coolers and like talk about talk about the uh, you know the day. Uh, but I, there's that one scene that one of their first missions where they go to that hotel and they bust up that ballroom. Yeah. I, w- I would I would love to be there. Uh, I mean, the other one maybe maybe not the best, maybe not the best one, but uh, I I would love to be on LV four two six fighting with the Space Marines. Um, that didn't really turn out so well for them. Yeah. But, uh, you know, maybe, uh, I don't know, knowing what I know now after watching the movie, uh, maybe the outcome would be a little better. Uh, I don't know how, I guess we would, I guess we just would have gotten out of there, but, but, you know, I would have, ta- I would have taken some souvenirs with me Yeah. before I got out of there. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but that would, yeah, that would, uh, it would be, it would, I, I guess my point is, I guess, I guess I like being part of a team. So, uh, uh, you know, whether it be the Ghostbusters or the Colonial Space Marines. Uh, that would be a, that would be a pretty that would be pretty cool to to hang out in. Nice. Very cool. Um, what would you title your autobiography? Ooh, uh, I think I just call it the Ming Dynasty. Nice. That's a that's a, <laughs> that's, a that's a little easy, I suppose. But, uh, <laughs> I, think that, I think that's fitting, though. I think that would work. That, that, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. <laughs> I can picture the cover. I can totally picture the cover. <laughs> yeah, although I heard uh, I heard Lance Henriksen from Aliens. Uh, he has a book out. Uh, I wasn't even aware of it, but uh, his book is called "Not Bad for a Human," which I thought I was like, man, nice. That's a cool title. So that is a cool title. Pretty yeah. good, yeah. Or you know, stories from the Ming Dynasty. I think that's uh, I think that's the title of my book. So uh, uh, you know, Simon and Schuster, uh, if you're out there, um, I'm ready. Uh, get your ghostwriter <laughs> ready. Let's do it. There you go. <laughs> Uh, let's see. What's your favorite made-up word? Ooh, that's a good one. Uh, I th- snicked, I think, from uh, Wolverine when the claws come out. I think, <laughs> that, I think that applies in so many situations. That, you know, whether it be uh, you know whether you're about to uh, uh, whether you're about to beat somebody up or you're mad or um, I don't know. I guess it could uh, it could apply in some sexual situations. I don't know. I'm. I'm, I'm, I'm <laughs> I'm, I'm working blue here now, but um, yeah, I think yeah, Snick does a good one. Like Bamf is a good one. The, I think the Nightcrawler like uh, teleporting, like any of the any of the X Men, like the Marvel X Men sound effects have always been cool. I love Nightcrawler. Yeah. Um, if you could wake up having gained any one ability or superpower or even just something that you could use in r- regular everyday life, but you only had this ability for one day. What would it be? Oh man, um, I, I don't know. most people would say like mind reading, which would be which would I, I think is dangerous though. That's you true. really, you really yeah. don't want to know what people are thinking about. You know, you, um, I've I've kind of spent the last few many like, all my life like kind of teaching myself not to care about what other other people think. But I think if you knew what they really thought, it would be it would be pretty dangerous. I think so, that's a big nerd mantra too. Yeah, but just like not caring about what other people think because mm-hmm. it just gets you in trouble yeah so i think the two that i go to are travel related uh one would be time travel 
where uh, if I could do it immediately, if it wasn't, if it wasn't as complicated as putting plutonium into a, a DeLorean, <laughs> um, you know, I would probably, and, and I, if I only had it for one day, I would go to as many time periods as I could. Uh, that being said, if, I, if time travel is kind of dangerous, you don't want to mess anything up, butterfly effects, all that kind of, uh, all that stuff. Uh, just, just uh, simple teleportation. We call. I'm kind of a, an adventurer, mm-hmm. and uh, I probably teleport to as many places as I could within 24 hours. And uh, I don't know, like, like drink a shot of bourbon in each place, maybe something like that <laughs> would be kind of fun. Nice, nice. Um, well, thank you, darling, for joining us. I really appreciate you taking the time. Absolutely. Did you just call me darling? That's so cute. I did. That's awesome. It's, 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 I call everyone that. It's, like a, it's a southern thing. It I don't know. I love it. No, I love it. I love it. I absolutely love it. That's awesome. So, Comic Palooza is this weekend. Um, everyone, uh, follow Comic Palooza. Go to the website. Get your tickets. Make sure you go see Ming when, while he's there and um, give him a high five. And, uh, and a hug. And a hug. Hugs always. Always there for a hug. Unless you have con crud. Don't spread the con crud. Yeah, no. Yeah, that's not cool. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm fine. I'll have, I'll, have, I'll have hand sanitizer at my, at my <laughs> I got a pretty good constitution. Like if you know, Even if you're sick, give me a hug. I don't care. Oh, you're so sweet. You're so much nicer than I am. I'm like, please get away from me. <laughs> I'll be f- I'll live. <laughs> um... On a more serious n- side note, after um, a lot of uh, sadness happening um, this week, um, our hearts and minds are with everyone in Orlando. So we just want to send our love and um, our nerd love and nerd nerdy thoughts are with everyone. Um, and uh, again, yeah, let's let's thank Ming and give him a hand of applause. Oh, thank you. You guys are so much fun. You guys are so much fun. I, I, let's do th- I, 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 I would love to do this again. Uh, hopefully we meet in person sometime, not be, you know, not not between the pixels, but... Yeah. Uh, this is yeah. pretty cool as well, but, uh, yeah. That'd be cool. I, uh, yeah, I think we should go uh, go meet at, like, Neil's Bar one day or uh, or in San Diego or something and, uh, yeah, hang out. That'd be mm-hmm. fun. Yeah, no, That'd I mean, I'll definitely see That'd you this cool. weekend. I'll, I'll make a point to come by your table and... Um, we can touch base in, in San Diego. Maybe we can all meet up for drinks or something. That'd be cool. I would love that. Thank you, guys. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah. Have a great night, guys. You too. Yeah, you too. Bye. Bye. Bye.